Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. The other day, P. Diddy's son, Christian Combs, tried to sneak one under the radar when he posted a Happy Father's Day message to his father online. And under a photo of him with his father when he was a baby, he wrote, Happy Father's Day to the greatest. Love you, pops. Now, after Christian publicly celebrated his father online, a few people had something to say. And one person said, bro had to sneak this ish in there a day later during the grave shift. And then somebody else was like, you thought everybody was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but not everybody was mad at Christian and, as a matter of fact, a lot of people actually defended him for openly giving his pops props online for Father's Day. For instance, one person said, You are a good son, Christian. You still honor and love your father and that's what an amazing and loving son does. May God bless and cover you and your family always. Prayers. And then somebody else was like, For all of those people who have negative comments, understand, this is still his father no matter what he's done. And a lot of y'all are miserable inside and find comfort from attacking in these comments. Just can't help yourselves but to be negative. And then after that, somebody else was like, Y'all are really twins. <laughs> yes, Diddy and Christian are twins, and if you put both of them together, they seem to have the combined emotional intelligence of like one peanut. Listen, I understand that that's your father, you love him, he brought you onto this earth, but during the year that a video drops of him whipping a woman up and down a hotel hallway, that is not the year to be jumping online talking about how great he is. That's the year that you go to CVS, you get him a card, you sign it, you put it in an envelope, and you give it to that ninja in private. Listen, I love my father to death. But if like the week or two weeks before Father's Day, my father was seen on video kicking like a little poodle down the street like it was a field goal, I don't know if I would be jumping online talking about how great my father is this week. I mean, you gotta be realistic with it. Now, interestingly enough, Diddy's first son Justin didn't make any public Father's Day remarks like his little brother Christian, but perhaps that's because he was too busy over there fighting a lawsuit of his own. So this is what's going on. Justin has been sued by Porsche Leasing LTD for failing to make the required payments on his luxurious 2022 Bentley Bottega V8. According to court documents, Justin Combs entered into an agreement to pay $3,365.23 monthly over 42 months for the Bentley. However, issues arose when no payment was recorded on December 20th, 2023. This lapse triggered Porsche Leasing LTD to demand the full payment for the car, adhering to the terms that specified that Justin Combs could not miss any payments. The lawsuit states, Therefore, there is now due, owing and unpaid, from the defendant the approximate sum of $172,601.43, plus additional charges pursuant to the terms of the agreement. Interest accrues from December 20th, 2023 at the rate of 10% per annum until paid in full. Furthermore, Porsche Leasing LTD claims to have fulfilled all obligations under the agreement and seeks the total payment and the return of the Bentley Bottega V8. All right, so after it came out that Justin was over there driving around in a Bentley that he wasn't paying for, a source close to the situation came out and tried to clean up the situation a little bit by saying that the missed payments were due to a bill being sent to an outdated address. Once Combs became aware of the issue due to lawsuit, he promptly addressed the payment. Justin's lawyer, Jeffrey Lickman, also said, due to an address change, Justin did not receive his bill, which resulted in unintentionally missing payments. We are in touch with the creditor and the matter is being settled. The outstanding balance will be paid and the lawsuit will be dropped. Listen, this is how you know Justin Combs is full of ish. What does you moving have anything to do with you making your car payment? Most stuff is done online anyway. Nobody's doing stuff through the mail anymore like that. And the bottom line is you went to the dealer in December of like 2022. You leased a Bentley and promised to pay $141,000, okay? You now owe $172,000, which means that you didn't make not one car payment. And I know darn well that you didn't move from wherever you were living like immediately after you went to the dealer. So, you're driving around in that Bentley and you never once thought to yourself, even if you did move, wow, I've been driving around in this car for an entire year and I have yet to make a car payment. Maybe I should contact the dealer. <laughs> Get out of here. Justin's full of ish. 
And what happened was, under normal circumstances, when Diddy's like name is in good standing, these dudes are probably able to walk into a dealership and get whatever they want. And they probably never make the payments. But because these car dealerships want to be associated with Diddy, they probably let these kids ride. But now these dudes are like, mm mm, you got to pay this bill. <laughs> Listen, let me know what you think about Justin Combs getting that Bentley and not paying the bill. I mean, it'd be killing me how it'd be the people who have the money that never want to pay nothing. <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments, and while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, check this out. The other day, Fat Joe jumped online, and he proclaimed that Chris Brown is the greatest performer of our generation, and the only reason that we don't give him the props that we gave Michael Jackson is because we have yet to forgive him for beating up Rihanna. Check this out. Yo, let me tell you something. I gotta get to this Chris Brown show. If Chris Brown never got into the controversy with Rihanna, we wouldn't be calling him Michael Jackson right now. Not like Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson. He is the most talented singer, artist, performer, hit maker, of our time. There's nobody even close to Chris Brown. And it's time we move past it. It's been 20 something years that I know of there's no more incidents. Man, we gonna let this lifetime go by without saying the truth? And so what happens is when the truth is an unpopular decision. Everybody gets scared to say it. They get canceled, especially famous people or somebody like that, right? But you know, the streets, they know what it is. The streets always know, they tell you the truth. There's the streets still bumping R. Kelly. He's in jail, he did terrible things. They still bumping R. Kelly. So what I'm trying to say is, that it's a shame that we lying and we're not giving it up to the king of R&B, the king of music. I mean, you know, the Michael Jackson, you know, and we be thinking he could battle Michael Jackson. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm not lying. We, you, if you really look at his body of work and you look at all his hits, you see what he does, you remove from your mind That we don't like it. We don't. We don't like that he had a controversy. We don't like that. We don't condone uh, the queens. We out here to protect the queens. We get that. He was a little kid, twenty some years ago. Listen, if Fat Joe was standing in front of my face right now, I would slap him. The bottom line is this: even if the whole thing with Rihanna didn't go down, Chris Brown is not Michael Jackson. Chris Brown is Chris Brown. Okay, and if Chris Brown was to get up on the stage with Michael Jackson and they were both in their prime at the same time and they would have battled it back and forth, Michael Jackson would kill Chris Brown. Who are you kidding? Listen, let me know something. If Michael Jackson and Chris Brown were to meet up and have a battle, and let's say they were both in their prime, let's say they were both 27 years old, and they battle back and forth in like the dance category and the singing category and the song for song category, who's gonna win that battle? Let me know in the comments. Now, check this out. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually agree with something that rapper Slim Thug has said online. Okay, so the other day Slim Thug was talking and he said that a million dollars was not a lot of money. Now, after he said that, a whole bunch of people jumped in his comment section to disagree with him. And they were like, yo, you walling out because a million dollars is life changing money. If you broke, a million dollars is not enough. A million dollars is not enough. If you broke, stop saying, if I had a million dollars, I'd be good for the rest of my life. No, you won't. If you broke, you got a million dollar shit you gotta buy right now. You got a million dollars worth of shit you gotta buy right now. You need a house, car. If you, most of y'all bad spending money, you gonna spend money at the mall. You gonna go to the celebrate, you got a million dollars. By the time you do all that, you gonna be broke again. So stop saying if I had a million dollars, 
It ain't about a, a number. It's about being a hard worker every day and grinding every day and keep going and keep going. It's a lifestyle. It's not a destination. So stop putting a destination on your goals. If I had a million dollars, no. Grind every day and get you some income forever. Now, after Slim Thug said that, somebody came in the comment section and they were like, don't listen to this, y'all. And then somebody else was like, I can take care of everything I need with a million dollars. The F he talking about. And then somebody else was like, a million dollars is absolutely enough if you're not spending it on foolishness. Um, enough of what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you get a million dollars, right, you buy yourself a house, you get yourself a car, and you pay off your debts, you're going to be broke again. So, like, a million dollars really isn't a lot of money. And I know, somebody's going to come in the comment section like, what in the world are you talking about, Sauce? I could get a nice-sized house and a car and still have $500,000 left. Yeah, but you still also have to factor in the fact that you got to pay taxes on that money, you got to pay taxes on the property for the lifetime of the property, and you're going to have other expenditures. So, that money's going to start dwindling fast. Now, I do understand that money is subjective and the value of money is dependent on how much money you've had flow through your hands during the course of your life. For instance, if you're somebody who has never had the luxury of having $1,000 in your hands all at once, and you get your hands on $1,000, you're running around talking about, I'm rich, biatch. But if you're somebody who's had a little money, and you look in your bank account, and you see that your bank account has $1,000 in it, you're over there stressing like, oh my goodness, I'm broke. Now, while I will admit that a million dollars is definitely life-changing money, you give me a million dollars right now, it's changing my life. I will also admit that Slim Thug is absolutely right when he says that a million dollars is not enough to rest on. So, if you were to get a million dollars today, you would have to find some way to make that money make some more money so you could live comfortably for the rest of your life. You just couldn't like stop working and rest on a million dollars. Listen, let me know if you agree with Slim Thug when he says that if you're broke, a million dollars is not enough and you would still have to get out there and grind every day. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now, check this out. While we're talking about how a few dollars can change a person's life, let me share this story with you. On Father's Day, rapper Rob49 decided to pay the bail of three nonviolent offenders imprisoned in Orleans Parish Jail in New Orleans. He said that he did it so that the fathers could be free to spend time with their children on Father's Day. Now to another story you'll see only on six, New Orleans native rapper Rob Fortnine gifting some New Orleans fathers this weekend just in time for Father's Day by paying the bonds for some nonviolent offenders who are fathers over at Orleans Parish Jail. A cause important for the rapper who says he remembers how tough things were for him as a child. And I grew up, um, my dad was incarcerated and I know how much like him being out could have helped my life being able to help dads that could get out of the petty crimes that been in the eight months, nine months behind $3,000 and $4,000, like that's nothing. You can change a little kid life. Now, the downtown New Orleans native also has a concert tonight, his annual Father's Day event at the arena this year, calling it Vulture Island Weekend. Let me tell you something. I just absolutely love this. And I'm so thankful of Rob49 for putting his money where his mouth is and allowing these three fathers to get home to their kids so that their kids would not have to spend a Father's Day without their dad. Yo, shout out to Rob49 for doing a type of good deed that's going to definitely have long-term effects. Listen, let me know what you think about Christian Combs giving Diddy the Happy Father's Day shout out and saying that he's the greatest. Justin Combs getting sued for not making them car payments. Fat Joe saying Chris Brown is Michael Jackson, but y'all won't admit it because y'all are still hating. Slim Thug saying if you're broke, a million dollars is definitely not enough. And Rob49 paying a bail of three fathers so that they could get out of jail and spend Father's Day with their kids. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments and while you're down there leaving a comment be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends hey yo thanks for tuning into the source your source for celebrity news peace